Hello again, everybody. This is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to another video of my Understanding Payday 2 video series. Today, we are talking the perk decks. This is one of those areas I'm sure a lot of people don't really know too much about because it was added again during one of the Crime Fest events, and it's kind of it used to be hidden away in the menu. Now it's just right down here. The perk decks are a collection of passive bonuses that you can have on your character and are essentially a way of double specializing. You can use these to either go even further down a specific class of specialties or to mix your abilities up with someone else. We'll start with the Crew Chief. This is the Mastermind variant. Now as you can see everyone has similar level ones to a point. But Crew Chief, first one, you get 10% more health, 25% more headshot damage, increased stamina and shout distance. Where it says Crew Perks don't stack, that simply means that if two people are Crew Chief, these bonuses will not be doubled. So you really only want one Crew Chief, one of like a armor or stuff like that. But Marathon Man increases shout and stamina, blending in. Blending in is just about the same for everyone. Simply increases your concealment and means you'll move a little quicker while wearing armor and you'll get more experience. Wolf Pack, crew gains 10% more health, just flat bonus right there. Walk in Closet, another same thing, the armor bag. The armor bag basically lets you start out in a suit and then if things go bad you can basically wear whatever armor you had equipped. It's useful for loud players who still want to do some um, help out during the stealth sections by spying and moving around. Other than that, it doesn't really have a use, but you do get a nice additional ammo pickup. And this is universal among all perk decks. Tessudo, gain 10% more armor, and your crew gains an additional 5 armor. So it basically makes everyone a little bit more durable. Fast and Furious, another universal bonus. 5% more damage, increases Doctor Bag interaction. Can't say anything bad about that. And then Hostage Situation. You and your crew gain 2% max health and 4% stamina for each hostage. And for just having one hostage, everyone takes 8% less damage. And for every perk deck, completing it will get you 10% higher chance of getting infamous rated items when you're getting your car draw at the end. Crew Chief definitely works well with the Mastermind. As you can see, because you're going to be taking hostages to begin with, this can make your life a lot better. It really doesn't work too well if you're going to be jokering police guards, but, I'm sorry, policemen, but you can still get the pure 8% damage reduction for having it. It's great to have at least one person with Crew Chief, anything more, and you're not going to get the full benefit. Muscle. Obviously this is going to be for the Enforcer. First you get more health. Headshot damage again the same. And then you are 15% more likely to be targeted. And you gain 10% more health. Again, this is meant for people who are going to wear heavy armor. Blending in the same. Giant Thread. You gain an additional 20% health. So that's 10, 20, 40 right now walk-in closet the same, disturbing the peace. Panic basically means that when you're shooting an enemy they may uh, basically have a small mental breakdown and it basically distracts them while you can kill them or get away. Doesn't work on special units but can help you if you're in the middle of things. Fast and Furious same thing and an 800 pound gorilla. You regenerate your health 4% every 5 seconds gain 40% health. So if we're taking tabs here, that will give you a grand total of 80% more health. Again, if you're going to be an enforcer, this will give you a lot more survivability and can really make you stand up to things if you're playing on Deathwish. Okay, Armorer. Armorer is sort of the technician based one. First, type 1 armor, you gain more armor, headshot damage, gain even more armor, blending in the same, gain even more <laughs> armor as you can see, locks the walk-in closet, 
increases armor rate, fast and furious, and 5% more armor, and reduces the armor recovery time. Now this one could also work with the Enforcer if you decide to get the combined tactical vest and if you go the technician route and get the bonuses for armor with them this can also give you some high survivability and it's because of the additional armor bonuses it's a decent one for pretty much any build that focuses on fighting the rogue is for people who are going the dodge build route first additional 5% dodge headshot damage 15% less likely to be targeted. If you combine this with the Ghost's bonus, you'll be 30% less likely. Blending in the same. Evasive another 10%. So that's 15 so far. Walking Claws at the same. Shadow Warrior another 10, so that's 25%. Fast and Furious. And then this is the Weapon Pierce Armor, which we were talking about with the Sign Killer and Professional bonuses. Increased weapon swapping speed is a fun one. Basically means you can quickly switch between two weapons in case one runs out of ammo and it helps you be a lot more versatile. The Rogue, as I said, this is for dodge builds and if you combine this also with the Fugitive's bonuses for low concealment. This is pretty much the heart and soul of the dodge build. If you're going to do this, you pretty much have to commit fully to it for it to be its most effective. Hitman. This was added in with the John Wick uh, free DLC, and this is basically for people who want to akimbo without wanting to go all the way down the fugitive line. First, you get increased armor rate, headshot damage. Here's your um, dual wield. Now, what's interesting about the Hitman is that you're going to lose armor, but you're going to recover it quicker. So it's basically meant for speedy play. You run out, quickly kill guys, let them hit your armor, run back in, recover, go out, and so on. Blending in the same. Advanced recovery. Again, you gain additional recovery of armor, but you lose more. Walk-in closet. Again, another 10, but 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Fast and Furious. And then Enhance Akimbo. Which, if you look takes you to 16. This is basically the same variant, or sort of like a halfway between the Akimbo line on the Fugitive. Now if you take Hitman and you take Fugitive, these bonuses will, the armor bo I'm sorry, the ammo bonuses will stack, giving you a huge amount of ammo. But Hitman is definitely useful if you're going to go for wearing some armor, but you're not going to fully commit to a dodge build. Okay, Crook is essentially a jack-of-all-trades bonus. One second, I really need to take a drink. First, you get a little bit more dodge. Similar to the Rogue. You get headshot damage. Now, this is interesting. You get dodge only for ballistic vests, and you get additional armor. So while this doesn't help you with the suit, it means that you'll actually have a decent dodge chance while wearing the vests, which normally don't have that. Blending in the same. Again, increases the dodge chance and armor. So basically the crook enhances these three, making them very powerful and helping you basically be like halfway decent at surviving. Its usefulness on Death Wish is debatable, unfortunately, because of how much damage enemies do, but it can help you on the lower difficulty levels. Again, another 15% chance for Ballistic Vests, 5% more damage, and then increases your army rate. So this is meant for people who want to basically be in the thick of things, but still have s some dodge survivability. It's good, I would say, for like people like the mastermind is good if you want to have a little bit more survivability if you're going enforcer this won't help you since it only works on the vest but fugitive and ghost it can help on burglar this is the stealth one bar none if you're going to be stealthy you want the burglar with you you get increased dodge chance and the headshot of course 
Standing still and crouching decreases your chance to be targeted, and you back corpses 20% faster. Same thing. Luck of the Irish increases your chance of dodge, and when you're standing still and crouching, you gain additional dodge, and you pick locks 20% faster. And that does stack with the bonuses from the Ghost Tree. Walk in Closet the same. Dutch Courage increases dodge again, and increases it, it while crouching. And you answer pages 10% faster. Damage. And then standing still and crouching increases recovery rate. So the burglar does have some okay means for fighting, but this is definitely the stealth builds, excuse me, perk deck of choice. If you're going to be stealthy, you want the burglar. Nothing else really matters because of the bonuses to answering pagers, stacking, uh, body bagging, I mean, people, and picking locks. And trust me, that 20% does pay off if you're trying to do something very quickly while there's guards nearby. Okay. Infiltrator, this is exclusive to Dragon. You need to have bought his DLC to unlock this. And this is an interesting one. It has some bonuses from the Enforcer tree, but also has health regeneration. So first, if you're within minimal, medium range of an enemy, you'll take 8% less damage. There's your headshot damage again. You'll take an additional 8, so that's 16%. Blending in, another 8%. And whenever you hit an enemy with melee, you'll gain additional melee damage for 7 seconds and can stack 4 times. This can turn you into a major killer if you get those enforcer bonuses for melee. Walking Claws are the same. Overdog. This is the similar bonus to the um, Enforcers. I can look that up quickly. There it is, the Underdog. So we have Underdog and you got Overdog. Oop, let me get back there. And as you can see, when you combine this with the bonuses you already have for close combat, and that enforcer thing, it can make you very durable simply because enemies are doing less damage to you. Fast and Furious the same. And then Life Drain. Striking an enemy with your melee weapon regenerates 20% of your health. This cannot occur more than once every 10 seconds. So this basically means that while you're running around in melee with the bonuses from Overdog and Underdog and Close Quarter Combat, every time you hit an enemy, you'll gain health back. And it's a very cost-effective way to recover your health, and why this works really well with the Enforcer. You'll have the bonuses from the armor that you could wear with the combined tactical vest, and you'll be able to recover health through melee, and you'll do more damage with melee as well. So, if you're going to be an Enforcer, this is definitely the one to have. And if you combine the Enforcer with the Technician's Armor Proof, or I'm sorry, Bulletproof, and get this, you'll be very durable and you'll be able to recover your health, which means you won't have to rely on first aid kits and doctor bags that much compared to other players. Next, the Sociopath, which if you haven't noticed from the previous videos, is what I'm using right now with my build. The Sociopath is part of the Hotline Miami uh, 2 pack. You had to have bought Hotline Miami 2's deluxe version, which I think was like five or six dollars more for it to count. It also gives you jacket and some unique guns and gear for him. Sociopath is a very interesting one. First, when you're within medium range, you receive 8% less damage, just like the Infiltrator. Helmet popping's the same. Tension. Killing an enemy regenerates 30 armor. This is similar um, to the Fugitive's bonus, all the way at the top. Pretty damn good for me. Blending in is the same. Clean hit. Killing an enemy with a melee weapon regenerates 10% health. But if you notice, there's something very interesting. This can only occur... The limit is once every 2 seconds, compared to the Infiltrator, which is once every 10 seconds. So if you think about this, with Clean Hit, you'll be able to recover your health a lot more compared to Infiltrator, and that's why I really like it. Now the catch, though, is the fact that you have to kill with the melee weapon, while Infiltrator, you just need to strike the enemy. Walking Closet is the same. 
Overdose, killing an enemy at medium range regenerates 30 armor. So, Tension and Overdose gives you a total of 60 points of armor back. Very, very nice, I would say. Fast and Furious, same, and then Showdown. Killing enemy at medium range has a 75% chance to spread panic. This is the similar to the muscles... Where was it? Disturbing the peace. But it works with any weapon. This is why my current build is an enforcer. I've combined the melee bonuses with the sociopath tree. So what happens is I kill enemies. They go into panic, which then lets me kill them with more melee so I get more of my health and armor back. And it just makes me almost unkillable. I've had games where I've gone from, you know, having 10 health and no armor to being fully back up within a minute. And it's just very cost effective and you get a lot of really good perks with it. It is a shame that you are forced to get Hotline Mammy 2 to get it, unfortunately. But it does seem like a very useful variant of the Infiltrator. And again, Sociopath, I would say, works best with the Enforcer. Gambler. This was this came with the Bonnie character. And is a very interesting character. Uh, the perk, I mean. First one, ammo packs you pick up heal you as well as give you ammo. Can occur more than once every four seconds. Helmet popping, same. Ammo give out. When you pick up ammo, every other player on your team will get 50% of a normal pickup. Which means that whenever you pick up ammo, your friends will get ammo as well. Which is really nice, especially for people who use specialized guns or very powerful ones that have low ammo, such as sniper rifles and certain pistols. Or I'm sorry, certain assault rifles too. Blending in the same. Sharing is caring. When you get healed from picking up ammo packs, your friends get healed as well. Another really good one. Walk-in closet, the same. More healing. Increases the health gain from ammo packs by additional 4. So which means instead of healing for 8 to 12, it heals from 12 to 16. Fast Furious the same. And then another 4, so it gives it more. Gambler is a really good support one. Now, it doesn't say anything about these bonuses not stacking. And I've seen some people make use of this as the mastermind. So if, since you're already going to be a support class, this helps you also heal everyone while picking up ammo. It's an all-around really useful one. It doesn't give you anything super fancy like the sociopath or the muscle. But it's a good backup one that as long as one person has it, it's really good at sharing the wealth with everyone. Next we have the Grinder. Grinder is another one that I really like. This came with the Sokol. So Sokol? I'm sorry if I just butchered that name. And this is one that's meant for people who want to be in the thick of things and basically help your teammates uh, while they're doing their own tasks. The first one, Histamine, damage an enemy, heals one life point every half second for five seconds. The effect stacks, but it only works when you're wearing a two-piece suit or a lightweight ballistic vest. So, enforcers, this automatically doesn't work for you. You cannot use the grinder. Trust me on this. I accidentally had it on. Helmet popping the same. Adrenaline, damage enemy, increases the amount of life restore, and you gain 20% more health. Adrenaline, I'm sorry, blending in the same. Endorphins. Same thing, increases the amount of health you get, and also gives your attacks a chance to pierce enemy armor. Walking closet the same. Dopamine increases the damage, the health restore when you attack an enemy. You gain 20% more health. Fast and Furious the same. And then Euphoria, same thing, increases the health restore, gives you more enemy armor piercing. And again, this is a good. The grinder is really weird in the fact that it doesn't really synergize with any one specific class as long as you're using lightweight ballistics vests and or the two-piece suit the grinder works this is purely a loud perk deck though so you don't want to take this if you're going stealth 
but this does give you a lot of survivability. I've seen people combine this with sort of a pseudo dodge build instead of taking the rogue and using the I'm sorry the where is it? yeah the rogue so they use the bonuses from the fugitive and the ghost tree with the low concealment and then the grinder sort of gives them additional power and health restore and again there's only a few means to restore health naturally and the perk decks give you three handy ways or one two I'm sorry four ways pretty easily I really did like the grinder. If you're going to be offensive minded, it's pretty good. I actually found it helped me out a lot even while playing on Deathwish. Because by being able to restore my health, I was able to mitigate the fact that I had very thin armor and they were just taking it off very easily. Then last for at least right now, because you know Overkill like said new characters, the Yakuza, which was added in with the um, Yakuza perk deck and character, and this is basically a Berserker base perk deck. First one, lower your health, the more armor recovery you have. Health has to get below 25% for this to work. Helmet popping the same. Again, lower your health, you'll gain movement speed as well. Same. Uh, lower health, you'll gain additional 20% armor rate. Walk in closet the same. Again, health below 25, you'll gain more armor. Fast and Furious the same. And then, final one, this basically means that instead of it happening at 25%, it happens at 50%. This, I, this is the only one that I really don't like because it doesn't really mesh with the Enforcer's Berserker, which has to be at 25, right here. And I just, again, I find that having to force my health to be so low doesn't really help me out, at least in terms of how I play. So I tend to avoid the Yakuza. I tried it before and I, it just, I died more of the Yakuza than I died anywhere else. So, that will do it for the perk decks. Um, we'll do a quick recap. So just based on the various classes. So if you're going to be a mastermind, crew chief is good. Armorer is okay for a mastermind. It gives you a little bit more survivability. Um, Gambler is also really good for the mastermind. So you're already going to be back up. This will let you move around helping people and restoring everything. Grinder is also really good if you want to make yourself more um, durable while helping people out. For the Enforcer, Muscle's really good. Armor is really good. Uh, let's see, Infiltrator and Sociopath are really good. Sociopath, I think, is... I prefer that for the Enforcer, but I can also see the Infiltrator being good as well. Simply for all the uh, reduced damage you take. Grinder, again, can be useful. And Gambler is good too, especially since as an Enforcer you're going to be on the front line, so you'll be picking up a lot more ammo. So this will help everyone out. Yakuza could work, but again, it's not my uh, strong style, so I don't really want to talk about it, because I don't have an extra frame reference for it. For the Ghosts, I guess Crew Chief could work for the Ghosts since you are going to be having less armor to begin with. Rogue is really good if you're going to go a dodge build route. Hitman can be okay if you want to make use of pistols without having to spend all the points in Fugitive. Crook is okay for a little bit more offensive. Burglar, definitely 100% stealth. Ghost plus Burglar, best, hands down. I can't really say anything more than that. And Griner could be okay, since again, you don't have, you're not going to be wearing heavy armor to begin with, so this sort of synergizes, and it can help out a little bit if you want to be more offensively minded. And again, Gambler is one of those ones that it kind of everyone can really get some benefit out of it. And Fugitive, again, because of the Fugitives having all those different skills. 
it's kind of hard to pick exact ones that work best for him. Um, I guess you could really st make a point of crew chief muscle armor. Rogue, maybe. Again, Rogue is a dodge oriented one. The future is going to have those dodge bonuses if you have low concealment. Hitman, if you want to purely, purely be a Kimbo dual wielding badass. Crook is okay. The Crook one it actually came with the Fugitive, and they do sort of synergize well, thanks to the increased bonuses for wearing the vest. Burglar? Nah, not really. Mm, infiltrator or Sociopath? Uh, not, I don't think so either. Again, you really need to be heavily melee-oriented, which means you need the Enforcer bonuses to really get the most out of these two. Gambler, yes. Grinder, yes. Yakuza, again, I don't know. And I think that will do it for the perk decks. And of course, you get perk points for every time you complete a heist. And for new players watching this, I would recommend you go up one perk tree completely all the way, so you get these passive bonuses, like plus 5% more damage, uh, the deck completion bonuses, and then you can then go up the other ones. So if you're brand new starting out and you just have, I guess, these five, um, really, Crew Chief, Armorer, and Crook are probably good starting out ones. If you've never played the game before, they'll give you some bonuses, and you'll be able to at least survive a little bit longer. Burglar, Infiltrator, and the rest are definitely more for advanced play. And I think that will do it. So if you have any more topics you want me to cover on Payday, do, excuse me, Payday 2's gameplay, definitely leave a comment below. I think I will do a stealth video just to show the basic rules of it. And that will come at a later point. So, for those of you who've been watching this, thanks so much. If you enjoy the video and want to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. And please check out GameWisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design and the industry. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will talk to you guys again real soon. Bye-bye.